Uh, but a, a, another uh, another group that we work with is um, is a, a relatively new religion in Ireland called the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, and they they have their own particular beliefs, and and are in fact al al although. Um, uh, a lot of people will, on first hearing, think that, that it sounds a somewhat silly uh, belief system. Um, it's no sillier than believing that the creator of the universe came down to one planet and impregnated a virgin in order to give birth to himself so that he could die and come back to life and write a book about it. You know, e every religion uh, <coughs> recognises the silliness <coughs> of other religions belief, religious beliefs, but not so much their own. Uh, the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, I should stress, is recognised as a religion in a number of countries around the world. And, and people have taken legal cases where, where they're entitled to um, have their, their, say, their driver's licence um, uh, um, photograph uh, taken with their, their uh, religious ob obligatory religious headwear which is a, a colander and so you'll find that those do, do uh, exist around the world so it's an interesting thing because although it, it sounds as, as silly as, 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 as some other religious beliefs may seem to, to, to atheists it is um, it's, it's a serious religion it, 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 it takes on the, the, the idea that the state has no right which is another human rights principle, that the state has no right to judge the credibility of religious beliefs. If somebody says, this is my religious belief, it's as valid as somebody else saying, this is my religious belief. And the state cannot put itself, under human rights law, in a position where it is judging that one belief is more credible than the other. So, uh, so to elaborate a little on that, I will ask that the, uh, one, one of the <coughs> pastors of the mo one of the more credible religious beliefs in Ireland, John Hamill, minister. From, from a minister from, from the... Um, Sorry for, for uh, offending your religious position uh, of uh, the uh, Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. So I'm preparing my obligatory uh, ecclesiastical millinery. That's on straight. Thanks very much. So, uh, Michael, and uh, thanks to Chris for the invite, have asked me to talk a little about uh, faith and faith as a way to understand the world and happy to do that. Uh, just before I begin, uh, to follow up on, on Michael's comments, we're actually working through a process at the minute with the Civil Registration Service here in Ireland uh, to become formally registered for the purpose of wedding solemnization. So if you would like to uh, support our efforts in that regard, maybe we could get some pictures uh, afterwards. We have a, a top hat. Uh, and avail here ready for anyone who wants to uh, promote the idea of pastafarian uh, weddings in Ireland. So uh, I guess to begin with um, my f initial faith was in Roman Catholicism. Uh, I was brought up by devoutly Catholic parents. I was uh, as much a believer in the Catholic faith as anyone here in Maynooth when I was young. Um, and I was educated by the Christian Brothers and they gave me an education in uh, what Catholics call the Deposit of Faith or the Fide Depositum. So the, the Deposit of Faith has two aspects to it. Uh, one is Scripture, faith comes from uh, Revelation and Scripture and the other is the teaching of the Catholic Magisterium. So those two things together make up the Catholic Deposit of Faith. Um, what I came to understand was that both of those sources of faith are misplaced and you can find a number of examples of that where the deposit of faith is just not consistent with, for example, the physical sciences. So um, if we consider uh, human evolution, for example, in the New Testament, in Paul's epistles to the Corinthians and to the Romans, uh, the doctrine of original sin is described. Original sin comes from the fall of man when Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden. And the scriptures describe the fall of man as an actual historic event, uh, as Adam and Eve as actual historic characters, and most importantly as Adam uh, being the descender, uh, the ancestor of all subsequent humans. Uh, now, in every single cell of every single person in this room, there's conclusive proof uh, based on genetics and evolutionary biology that faith in that scripture is faith in a falsehood. 
and the same proposition is also proposed by um, the Magisterium. So in 1950 there's a papal encyclical called Humani Generis <coughs> and that's actually the most contemporary teaching of the church in relation to human evolution still today and Humani Generis makes it clear that uh, evolution may have happened naturalistically with regard to every other species on earth but with regard to humans uh, it uh, insists that Adam was an actual historic character that the fall of man was an actual historic event and that Adam is the ancestor of all subsequent humans and helpfully it also describes the reason for that teaching and the reason for the teaching is if the fall of man wasn't an actual historic event and the book of Genesis is just allegory then that means Jesus sacrificed his life for a metaphor which wouldn't seem to be a very good use of the divine's time so the uh, both aspects of the Catholic deposit of faith uh, the uh, revelation from scripture and revelation from the teaching of the magisterium are demonstrably incorrect and you can have your biology department demonstrate that to you using any cell of your body anytime you like and there's lots of other physical sciences that are just cannot be reconciled with the Catholic deposit of faith um, so human evolution is not consistent with uh, biology or genetics transubstantiation cannot be reconciled with chemistry or the atomic theory of matter um, and fundamental aspects of faith like the idea of an ethereal immortal soul that is responsible for your decisions and accountable for those decisions after your death that can't be reconciled with neuroscience or with particle physics so particle physics tells us that there are lots of different kinds of particles and some of them interact with each other and some of them don't so anyone who has two torches can demonstrate that two photons don't interact with each other uh, two beams of light just pass right through each other without interacting at all but some particles do interact so if you have any two particles that interact let's call them a X particle and a Y particle there's a fundamental law of physics that says you can smash two X particles together to make a Y particle or smash two Y particles together to make an X particle so the purpose of that story is that um, if you consider for example how uh, physicists investigated why protons and neutrons in the center of an atom are heavier than electrons and the, the history of that story is that um, uh, protons and neutrons are a class of particle called hadrons and a man called Peter Higgs proposed that uh, hadrons are 2,000 times heavier than electron because they interact more strongly with a theoretical new particle that he proposed and that is testable anyone who says these two particles interact <coughs> is proposing if you smash them together you can make the new particle so based on that, uh, nine billion dollars was spent to build the biggest machine in the history of humanity just to smash together hadrons in the Large Hadron Collider to make a Higgs boson. So the outcome of that experiment is not just that Peter Higgs was right and the laws of physics were right, the outcome of that experiment is that we now have an inventory of all the possible particles that can interact with the atoms in your brain. So that's not to say uh, physicists don't know of any new particles that could interact with your brain. That's to say physics knows that there are no more particles that can interact with your brain as it makes decisions. So either you don't have a soul or your soul can't interact with your brain or else all of the physicists in CERN have wasted their lives on a collective delusion about how the universe works. So here again are two different propositions. One is made on the basis of faith by a man with a pretty white dress in Rome and the other is made on the basis of objective evidence by lots of smart people with white lab coats in CERN. So you can't choose both. Both can't be right. One of them has to be wrong. And from my perspective, I just thought it was ridiculous to continue to take on faith 
the view of the man at the white dress in the Vatican as compared to the view of all the smart scientists with the white lab coats and the objective evidence from repeatable uh, experiments. So that's why I defected from the Roman Catholic Church and became a uh, ordained minister in the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. And you might think then that that presents a difficult question for me, and I think it does. Uh, and that is, if faith is an unreliable way for Roman Catholics to find out the truth about the world, how can faith in the existence of a flying spaghetti monster be a reliable way for me to find out the truth about the world? And the first thing to say about that is uh, my faith is objectively much more sensible than Catholicism. And objectively, I mean measurably. Uh, so we can consider events from this year, like for example, uh, the terrible earthquake in Italy killed around uh, 300 people. So <coughs> as that earthquake struck in Catholic Italy, it is undoubtedly the case that many innocent young children started praying to the all-loving Catholic God uh, to save them. And if you're a Roman Catholic and you accept the Roman Catholic faith, what you have to accept is that uh, the all-loving, omnipotent Catholic God heard all of those prayers listen to them very carefully, considered that he had the power to intercede on earth and save those children, but decided again against that, decided that many of those children should suffer horrific, agonizing, slow deaths in absolute terror. Now, if you ask me how I view the flying spaghetti monster who didn't intervene to save anyone from an earthquake, I would say that's because sometimes the flying spaghetti monster is a total jackass. But the, uh, the flying spaghetti monster created the world and he made lots of mistakes because he's a jackass and he's frequently drunk on the job and that's why there are volcanoes and earthquakes. Um, so that makes sense in my church, but if you're a Roman Catholic you have to figure out how can you have faith in an all-loving, all-powerful God who listens to the prayers of the faithful and lets them die pointless, agonizing deaths. So on the first level, I think that uh, my faith is more uh, objectively sensible than Catholicism. Uh, but against that, just because it's more sensible than Catholicism doesn't mean it's true. So it's not difficult to be more sensible than Catholicism where you're asked to have uh, faith in exorcisms. Uh, faith that special men can expel devils from the afflicted. Faith that special men uh, have the power to transubstantiate a glass of wine into the blood of a 2,000 year old Jewish carpenter. Uh, faith that uh, God wants uh, marriages to discriminate against gay people. Faith that God wants ordinations to discriminate against women. Uh, so it's not difficult to be more sensible than uh, Catholics, but I would have to accept that um, if faith is a poor way for Catholics to understand the world, then um, it's, uh, it's quite irrational for me to be a Pastafarian. It's just not, qu just not quite as silly as it is to be uh, a Catholic. And uh, we know this also because the Catholic bishops even have sillier hats than mine. Uh, so um, that's why I lost my faith in Catholicism and became a Pastafarian. I, I should add, by the way, that that that, um, that John is actually in, in the process of of, um, of seeking a license to be able to uh, solemnise weddings as a as a minister of the church of the flying spaghetti monster and um one of the reasons that the minister gave for turning down the application is that uh one of the things was describe your worship and then they said the pastafarians worship uh wearing colander based headgear and uh the response was that that's not credible so john has asked them in his appeal uh, why it is less credible than the different types of headgear that other religions wear so that, that's actually a position that the state is taking. It's astonishing. I mean, the, the, one of the reasons that the that this type of church is very important is that it does highlight the the uh, 
the absurdity not not just of religion because people you know people are entitled to believe what they want but the absurdity of the state taking it upon itself to say we will give all of this privilege to this particular religious belief but we won't give any privilege to this one because we think this one is ridiculous and we're quite happy with with, with the the established one um, um, it kind of sounds like the church kind of um, developed out of like trying to disprove the Catholic Church. Uh, sorry, I have to put on my vestment. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> answer in a heretical <laughs> manner. Uh, um, like, well, a bit for you, me, yes. W would you feel that that's a correct perception? And um, if if I am right in that, do you think it's the right way to confront people with that? Sure. Or it so seems to me it could be a quite negative way to approach it. Yes. So the, the comparison with Catholicism is mine, just because uh, Catholicism was the faith that I was raised in. Um, I think most countries where the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster is formally accepted would be non-Catholic. Um, so the um, uh, some people perceive the Church to be only a parody, for example, uh, as you say, to, to try and make fun of the religious. Now, there are certainly some people who use the church only as a parody, uh, but of course we shouldn't judge all pastafarians by um, just uh, a few examples. So, for example, you might be familiar with uh, John Oliver's show in the States. Mm -hmm. uh, John Oliver officially recognised a religion, uh, I believe it's called Our Lady of Perpetual Tax Exemption. Now, that, that's, uh, that's an officially registered religion in the USA and he used that quite overtly to make fun of Catholicism uh, but uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, just because that's a, a, a real registered denomination in the States I wouldn't judge all Christians by John Oliver and I don't think we should judge all Pastafarians just by the small handful who uh, use it as a parody. So in terms of the Irish Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, we are every bit as devout and pious of those of any other faith. We are entirely serious about our religion. And um, the comparison with Catholicism explicitly, exactly as you say, I think that was uh, for a comment with respect to the talk today, but that's just because uh, Catholicism is the, f the, the faith that I was brought up in. Just historically, where the Churches of Florence Spaghetti Monster began was in America, where uh, there, was, there were attempts by fundamentalist Christians to get evolution taught, not just as, as religion, but to get evolution taught in science classes. As, as an alternative th scientific theory that you have, the, the, or sorry, crea sorry, creationism that you have creationism taught alongside evolution as as um, as alternative theories. So 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 they were they, they were saying if you're teaching evolution, you should also teach creationism um, in science. And so the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster emerged as a response to that, saying, um, well, if you're going to do that, then you should also teach the Church of the Flying Spaghetti, Spaghetti Monsters theory, which is that the uh, the universe was created by an invisible flying spaghetti monster. Right, that's it. In which, uh, it which is based on a combination of both faith and logic. And um, so we have faith that the universe was created by the, fl uh, the flying spaghetti monster, and we logically know he's invisible because we can't see him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's um, so I mean to a certain extent. I mean you're right to the extent that there, that 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 there there is um an element of uh, the flying Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster unashamedly um, articulates its beliefs in ways that it knows that some people would believe are ridiculous. Um, but they are no more ridiculous objectively than beliefs that people will genuinely give respect to. And so it does, it, it raises a very important both philosophical and legal question which is, 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 is why when somebody says this is my set of beliefs for which there's no evidence and somebody else says, this is my set of beliefs for which there is no evidence. Why, why would you give cre credibility and privilege to one belief and, and, uh, and consider the other to be, to be ridiculous? Uh, when it was, um, it was Joan Burton was Minister for Social Protection when the law was introduced 
to differentiate between religious and secular marriages in Ireland. Um, when she was asked why she did that, uh, what she said was uh, she wanted to protect the institution of marriage in Ireland uh, from Elvis impersonators. Uh, so that's what she said in the doll. Um, so to follow on from what Michael said, I mean the, the the position of the Irish government then is uh, if you have a wedding which is carried out in the context of um, an elderly celibate man putting on a pretty frock and saying some magic words over a glass of wine to turn them into the blood of a 2,000 year old Palestinian carpenter, that's entirely sensible. The moment it becomes ridiculous is when he puts a white jumpsuit on. That, that's when it becomes ridiculous and so ridiculous that we have to make it illegal. Um, that, that's the position of the Irish government today. And as Michael mentioned earlier, the, the, the reason given in our appeal for not registering the, um, our church so far, and I say so far because it's a work in progress, was because our form of worship by wearing clerical millinery, as I am at the minute, is not credible. Whereas the bishop's hat apparently is credible. So literally, um, citizens in Ireland are taxed in order to pay a civil servant to make subjective judgments about the hats of our citizens and to apply different rules to different citizens depending on their opinion of their hats. And this is the, the uh, reductio ad absurdum where you arrive <coughs> once you start making uh, judgments by the state on which religion is sensible and which one isn't. I mean, you can go back to antiquity and the Greek classics and th the greatest minds of humanity have tried to decide does God exist and if so, which gods exist and which don't. And essentially what the Irish state is saying, well, it's not that hard. We'll get a couple of civil servants to do that. Check their hats. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. A couple of civil servants will decide based on whether we like their hat or not. Anyone else? <coughs> yeah. Is that how simple it is? Like, like, is it literally just someone has decided, okay, you're wearing a column around your head, so it can't be your religion, yet we have the Pope who wears his, his fancy headgear and all that. Why have they said it's not? So it, it's, it's notoriously <laughs> difficult from a, <coughs> a legal perspective to define what's a religion and what isn't. Um, so there were a number of reasons given. Uh, one of them was that I'm a member of Atheist Ireland, which I am, uh, and they said you can't be an atheist and a member of a religion. Um, and that uh, I'm sure all of the interfaith experts here will know that's profoundly ridiculous because uh, Buddhists don't have uh, a deity, a god figure. It's not difficult to find a Buddhist scholar who will tell you that all Buddhists are atheists. Um, so theism versus atheism is a different question for, than whether or not you're a member of a religion. Uh, so um, the, the other reason was they, they uh, on the application form they ask you to describe your form of worship. And I described my form of worship and the civil servant judged that that's not credible. And that's the only uh, reason for the Pastafarian Church not solemnising weddings in Ireland, because a civil servant in uh, Hawkins House decided that it was perfectly sensible for a bishop to wear a tall white bonnet, but it's entirely not sensible for me to wear this hat. They, they also said uh, <coughs> that... Um, that they, they were aware of somebody else who claimed to be the, the yes. only, the, the, the true Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster in, in, in our representative in, in, in Ireland. But, but they, don't, they, they wouldn't dream of saying that to a, a, you know, a Sunni Muslim, saying, no, we, we don't recognise you as, as an imam because there are Shias and there are Ahmadiyyas. You know, so, so, I mean, it, it's, it's, although it may seem like a, a, a parody, it's a, it's, you know, it, it, it has a very serious um, purpose. You know, it, it, it is touching on very serious philosophical and, and legal points as, as, as to how we run our society. How, you know the person that decided, civil servant that decided yeah. it, what training did they have to make that decision? Uh, none whatsoever. So they're basically just Joe Soaps in an office and decided you're not getting it? Yes, I'm, I'm sure 
Chris could run rings around that person in terms of knowledge of different rela uh, religions and how they relate to each other. So the person who's deciding effectively what religion is and isn't in this country has no yes, backing and for uh, uh, education uh, to do so. In fairness, uh, I have sympathy for their position in that legally it's incredibly difficult to decide what is and isn't a religion. Um, so a lot of countries, for example, try to distinguish between religions and cults. Um, uh, so they don't want to give, for example, tax exemptions to the Scientologists. Um, and uh, providing a legal definition to distinguish between a religion and a cult is quite a difficult thing to do. So uh, there's um, the, the, the civil servant is in an incredibly difficult position because what the legislators have done is they have created a law which doesn't find religion but then uh, provides different set of rules for religious uh, as compared to secular citizens and it's just left up to a civil servant to make up their own mind in terms of what a religion is and what a religion isn't. And there's no guidelines provided? No. Because we've asked, no could we nothing. Could copy of the guidelines? Uh, nothing. Not. And uh, in fact, the reason why there's no guidelines is there is um, precedent for this from the European Court of Human Rights. And the European Court has said that it is not within the competence of states to decide uh, that this particular religion is valid or that one isn't. Essentially what the state is supposed to do according to human rights law is legislate the same for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're in one of the uh, well-established 2,000 year old religions, whether you're in a brand new tiny denomination or whether you're uh, a non-religious person, the state should not give preference to any one or the other. It shouldn't give preference to atheists it shouldn't give preference to pastafarians or Catholics or anyone else. It should treat everyone the same. But once you introduce laws that say, well, we'll have to distinguish between religious and non-religious citizens and uh, provide different rules for each, then you have to start to try and define what is a religion and what isn't. And it's, it's notoriously difficult to do legally. And the only mechanism, uh, I mean, uh, pastafarians carry out civil weddings in Australia, New Zealand, and USA, and lots of different countries. Um, it's, a, it's already a well-established religion, and the only reason that Ireland has uh, not to establish it here is because they don't like my hat. Uh, as Michael said, there was another couple of reasons quoted that um, some other uh, person somewhere in Cork, I believe, had claimed to be the only leader of the Pastafarians in uh, in Ireland, uh, but you know the civil registration service doesn't ask Muslims to resolve the Sunni Shia conflict before they register different denominations of Islam. Um, In fact, uh, on, under the Civil Registration Act, which is the closest thing we have to a register of, of uh, religions in mm -hmm. Ireland, this would be religions who have, who have applied religions or denominations who have applied to be allowed to solemnise marriages as, as religious. There's 126 different religious denominations in, in, in Ireland. Mm -hmm. people are in the religion of the fly in So that, uh, that's another one of the questions on the application form. Um, as I answered, uh, there are thousands, but many of them remain in hiding due to Christian persecution. So um, we can uh, observe that there's never been a pastafarian Taoiseach in Ireland, for example. Coincidence, Michael? <laughs> I think not. So uh, because we have suffered so much persecution uh, at the hands of Christians, many pastafarians prefer to remain in hiding. Now, um, the Civil Registration Service attempted to say that we should have a register of who's a pastafarian and who's not. Um, uh, I think. President-elect Trump had a similar idea for Muslims in the States, and most people have thought that wasn't such a good idea, uh, but the Civil Registration Service thought it was a good idea for Pastafarians in Ireland, and again what we've explained is that's a breach of human rights, you, can't, you cannot be obliged to reveal your own philosophical convictions uh, against <coughs> your will. So uh, I mean when the, when the Civil Registration Service asked that question, can you give me a list? of the Pastafarians in Ireland? I mean, the proper answer is no, mind your own business. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank you so much for coming today. It was an extremely enriching and worthwhile talk, and I know I've learned so much, and 
um, you know, the information that you have here, if anybody's interested in bringing this, we don't have an atheist society on campus, surprisingly, for such a... And if anyone's interested in supporting pastafarian weddings in Ireland, we can have uh, a photo, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, um, let's do this. <laughs> I don't know how to work this. Yeah. Someone will have to show me how to work this. I suppose if I'm going to solemnize weddings, I'll have to find out. Um, is it, is I it haven't had a wedding yet, but I think I, I, I'm going to try it. No, I, we're not going to assume this is going to be a mixed gender wedding. This could be a same well, sex uh, wedding. Well, uh, <laughs> it's, it's whoever volunteers. So can we, <laughs> we can have, uh, we can have two men with one wearing a veil. <laughs> that would look beautiful. Do you mind taking a photo? Yeah. Point and press, yeah. There we go. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel I should be throwing compassion. Congratulations.